So yeah, it's a different kind of nerf we're looking at today. So these are neural radiance fields, right? Which is, which is something that's been happening, you know, been going around the AI literature for a while, a couple of years at least. Um, really impressive ways of generating new views of scenes. I'm familiar with how nerfs work, but I don't work with nerfs every day. So I brought in my TAME PhD student here, Lewis. Hello. Yeah, and Lewis <laughs> actually, you know, trains nerfs. He's working with nerfs as part of his PhD. And so, you know, you're going to explain to us how it works. I hope so, yeah. <laughs> what they do is they take a series of uh, RGB images and from those RGB images of a scene, they're able to reconstruct it in 3D using a neural network. Um, traditional methods of 3D reconstruction are things like point clouds, voxel grids, meshes, things like that, but they're discrete. And for some scenarios, that's, that's all you need. But for real life situations, for example, this room, it can get very, very complicated. Many, many points, many, many faces on your mesh. This neural radiance field is, is able to reconstruct it in very, very high quality detail, just only using simple RGB images that you can capture on your phone. So I think the interesting thing about this for me is that we're actually not doing rendering in, in a way you might expect. So normally what you would do with rendering is you'd have some meshes that you then, you know, you, you render them as pixels, so you rasterize the image or you do ray tracing or something like this. With a NERF, what we're actually doing is essentially a bit like ray tracing, but we're actually using a neural network to say, okay, this ray is gonna be this color and this ray is gonna be this color. And so we were basically building our 3D scene into the kind of inside of a neural network. So the parameters and the weights of the neural network are actually encoding our Christmas tree or our car or whatever, or our room or whatever else it is we're, we're, we're uh, looking at. I'm just gonna draw here a trained nerf for now. So imagine we're looking at this from a side angle. So we have something like this. And for the sake of this video, as you will see later, I'm gonna draw you a nice Christmas tree. Um, I hope you're better at drawing than me. Uh, not a chance. <laughs> That's actually a lot better than me. Okay, actually. and you know, I'll just shade it in green. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, there you go. So, and let's imagine that we have a camera up here. Now, when I say camera, an image has already been taken of, of this Christmas tree in real life. Um, and what we're doing is simulating this, this camera. This camera in real life would take an image. That looks like that. Makes sense looking at it from a above sort of view. So, how do we render this, right? So what we do, we start shooting rays into the environment like this. This is what the neural network does. So unlike things like diffusion, which basically generate noise, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, stuff like that, frogs on stilts and stuff like that, yeah. This doesn't generate an image given a position in 3D and a view direction. It will give you a color and a density at that point in the environment. That's important. That's what di is different from things like diffusion is that it has a 3D representation. It understands the environment. So now we've shot this ray through, what we need to do is query a series of points along this ray and ask the neural network, okay, I'm at this point, I'm looking at it from this direction. What should the color be? What should the density be? So let's start off by doing this. So we're gonna do this point here, right. What is the color and what is the density? We go to the neural network and it comes back and says the color is white, doesn't matter, because the density is zero. Why? Because we're in empty space, right? There's, there's no nothing there. Right? There's nothing there, yeah, it's like air. You can't render nothing. So it doesn't matter, let's continue. Do it again, nothing. Again, nothing, again, nothing, again, nothing. Oops, thank you. Wow, here we go. We've created a point here and it's come back with a density of one, aka it's inside an object, and it's come out with a color of green. Makes sense because we're now entering this Christmas tree. And what we're gonna do is do it again, here, 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 here. And you've queried all these points along the ray. The neural network's come back with nothing, nothing, well, white, 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 but with, let's say, density zero, 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 zero. Green, density one, green, density one, green, density one. Zero, zero. Perhaps the thing that when you first learn about this is hard to get your head around is normally in ray tracing what you would do is you would fire a ray into your scene usually based on your position of your pixels and say basically query what colour is it and it might bounce around and do lighting or something like this but essentially it will come back and say yeah it's red and you paint that pixel red. In this case we're actually doing multiple samples per ray 
and we're saying what's here, what's here, what's here, all the way along. And, and what you'll do is sometimes you'll just shoot off and there'll be nothing there. Sometimes you'll hit an object, you'll intersect an object, and for some time you'll see different colours. And so your rendering process is going to be about sending out a lot of these rays and finding out where in 3D everything is, right? Mm -hmm. As opposed to just sending out a ray and going, oh, it's red. Yeah. Now that might seem really inefficient, but actually this is the only way it trains, right? Because yeah. if you trained a neural network and just said, yeah, this is red, this is red, this is green, this is red, then it will work very nicely at just drawing that particular image. Yeah. But you can't then move the camera over here and say, okay, what does it look like from above? Right, where we haven't necessarily got any images. So the idea would be that you train this with, with sort of another camera. My camera's worse than yours. Uh, <laughs> and another camera. So you maybe have three cameras, but now we can draw this one and we can draw this one and this one because we can shoot rays out and we can do things. What's important here is that when you shoot the rays out here, they are intersecting, let's say like that, that's sort of a bit iffy because it goes through there. But that's how you're able to finalize where that object is in 3D space because these points intersect on the rays that you shoot, which is why with Nerf, one of the downsides maybe is that you need quite a few images for it to properly yep. get a good reconstruction. If you only have one image, what will happen is it will look pretty great from anywhere near that image. But if you move elsewhere and it will, it will degenerate pretty quickly. Um, so and, and what, another thing that's interesting about this is normally in any kind of AI or, or machine learning, what you're trying to do is generalize your approach to some other data set. So you say, I want to train on this data set, but ultimately I don't really care how well it works on that data set because I already know all the answers. What I care about is how it works on this data set and this data set. But in NERF, we're actually learning this exact scene. It's not going to reconstruct a different kind of tree because that's not in the training set. We only care about producing images of this tree from different directions. Yeah, overfitting to the max, pretty much. They tell you never to overfit, but in this case, overfit yeah. as much as you can. This is overfitting by design, right? Yeah, yes, by design. Exactly. Yeah. So I figure we could just trot off down the corridor and, and take some pictures and have a go. Now, a Christmas tree is actually a really hard example well, of... Well, clients Yeah, I mean, that's not an easy thing, right? And, and, and it's a good example in a way because we'll see some of the problems as well as the benefits of Nerf. But also, it is worth knowing that this is something that most reconstruction techniques are going to really struggle on, yeah. right? So... This is a hard problem, but it's also fun. Yes. You know when you say you've got to take quite a few pictures, how many is quite a few for something like a Christmas tree? If you tree? want a good reconstruction, at least 250. Okay. Yeah. And, and those are the good images. There are, to be fair, because video. Nurse really popular, there's lots of research going on, and there are many, many techniques that are trying to reduce the number of, they don't all work very well, right? So, you know, your mileage may vary. If you want really good reconstruction, then a lot of images is what you're going to need. And obviously if I'm, obviously I'm a videographer, so video any good? Video's good because video is a lot of, I mean, aside from maybe motion blur yes. and things like that, if you've got good quality frames, that's just more and more shots. So what have we got? We've got a nice looking Christmas tree. I didn't decorate this one. And this is a very complicated scene, right? Because we've got bushes at the side with huge numbers of leaves. We've got sofas, we've got whatever all this stuff is hanging off the, the trellises. It's a big, big place as well. One thing about normal Nerf that you see in the literature is that they run on fairly constrained scenes. Like you often you've used a robot or some other capture rig to capture very nice concentric circles of images, all equally spaced. Yeah. Everything's very constrained. We're just going to kind of wave a camera around and see what happens. Yeah, yeah pretty much. It's more fun. So, yeah. uh, so Lewis will capture some videos and then we'll, uh, and I'll, yeah, I'll stand over here and not be in the shot. What happens if you get things changing in these images? It's not good. That, that's where you'll get a lot of, I think they, they call them floaters, where it can't figure out where to put certain pixels in the scene because they're different throughout and then it will just create noise. So you could be photobombed and that would really cause a problem. Exactly. Right? You get kind yeah. of a ghostly mic flipping exactly. into the scene and then flipping back out again. That's exactly it, yeah. yeah. So we've got the video now. The next step is we need to get the camera positions and then we just got trained enough. And uh, that should that take... Yeah. About an hour. So I've trained up this Nerf and currently we're, we're viewing it. For this, I'm using Nerf Studio, which is what a lot of people are using now because it's very user friendly and it's very, very good. And this is the sort of thing that it looks like. So you can see all of the images and where they are in 3D space. And that was me going around that Christmas tree. It takes a while for the, for it, the quality to increase because what this does is it renders it very quick because you need to get an understanding of the environment. But nerves are slow, right, for real-time rendering. So it takes about five seconds for it to render a good image every time. But if I move it around here, and let me just get rid of the cameras here so you can just see the thing. 
give it a few seconds and it should, there we go. Now, I want to talk about what's good and what's bad about this. There are Nerf data sets out there that are fantastic and you'll be able to get really good high quality reconstructions from them. This is, is not so good because I took it on my phone and there's lots of things like motion blur, different sort of issues. I didn't capture the whole scene, but things like the Christmas tree, that looks pretty good to me. You know, you can see the baubles on it and high quality. You're not this tall, right? With the greatest respect. If you come down, yeah, yeah, will it be better if you're closer to where the original yeah, cameras were? Ex it should be. Oh, hang on, hang on. It's a bit finicky, mind you. There we go. So this is a player. Yeah, it's a real-time renderer and it looks good from this perspective because this was where the images were taken from. Because that's around my height where I was taking it from. And this is probably very close to there you go, it's very close to where these images were taken, which is why you can see, when it loads, you can see the background somewhat. You can see the trees, it makes sense, the Christmas tree looks good. As soon as you move out, suddenly it looks pretty bad, right? And that is one of the things with Nerf, is that it's very good where the images can see the, the scene. There is going to be a lot of loss of quality when you go outside where we were capturing the images from. Would you call this a data set or a picture or an image or a scene? What would you call it? I would call this a data set. Data and sets. How big is a data set like that? So this is around 300 images. So Nerf data sets have a series of images and then a JSON file with where all the camera positions are. That's, that's it. But this is about 300, but they're all relatively if you see here, they're all pretty close together, right? If you want a, a really good capture, a really good scene, you want them spaced far apart, capturing the entire thing. I'm not Mr. Fantastic with long arms. I can only capture things around here, right? Which is why when you go and look, let's say over here in the background, you'll see that the background here especially on the ceiling, it's really not very good because not a lot of data was captured in these images of the background, so that's why it's not as good. You see that here, this is just noise, and the reason why that is just noise is because I didn't actually capture any of that floor when I was capturing the video, I just forgot, which is why when, when you look at it from here, it looks awful, but that's not really the fault of the nerve per se, that's more of the fault of me. <laughs> Perhaps it's worth thinking about what we would actually use this for because ultimately people might be looking at this and going, well, it's not as good as a 3D render, but we actually only had to capture 300 images. We didn't have to artistically design the tree in 3D. We didn't have to paint all the, all the meshes. We didn't have to do any of that. Um, and, you know, I couldn't do that anyway because you've seen my drawing abilities. <laughs> so, but the other thing is, that it, we also, as well as the colour, we can also extract where the objects are, which means that you can convert a lot of these objects into a mesh. So you can use this multi-view reconstruction to essentially obtain 3D volume. So you could then speed up your creation of an actual 3D asset that you could use in a game or something like this. Is this the future then of, re of 3D rendering? Is this how it's all going to work? This month possibly, yeah. yeah. Actually, there's a new rival to Nerf called Gaussian Splatting, which is also providing incredibly impressive results. So maybe that's video number two. This network is maybe slightly better when it has the text uh, uh, estimating the noise. So you actually put in two images dystopian abandoned futuristic cities with overgrown plants right and then I just put them in a for loop and just produce 200 of them so I can pick the nice ones